In this video, we're gonna look at making a lead acid battery. And although lead acid is thrown around a lot, the acid is almost always sulfuric acid. But as usual, let's go over some information here. Lead acid batteries were first discovered in 1859 by the French physicist Gaston Planté. It was the first chargeable and dischargeable battery. First automobiles that were invented used hand crank mechanisms to start them. Electric start autos using these lead acid batteries began in 1908 using just six volts, and that was used for decades. It wasn't until the late 1950s when larger engines came along that it required 12 volts, and that's what we use today, of course. In general, there are three components to a lead acid battery. There's lead, of course, lead dioxide, and sulfuric acid. These two make up the electrodes, and this makes up the electrolyte. When a lead acid battery is discharged, the cathode is positive and the anode is negative. When it's being charged, the cathode becomes negative and the anode becomes positive. It's the setup just like in electrolysis. But you'll notice down here in the diagram, I'm keeping the cathode positive and the anode negative just for simplicity. In a battery, the current or the electrons are flowing from the lead dioxide cathode to the lead anode. When doing work, like starting a car or running a light bulb like I have here, the lead anode gives up the electrons, which the lead dioxide cathode accepts. So the current is flowing in this direction, counterclockwise, counterclockwise Sorry, with the way I have this set up here. If this continues to go without charging it, it'll eventually turn both electrodes into lead sulfate, and at that point, your battery will stop working. There are ways to reverse that. Sometimes charge, simple charging will do it if it's not too bad. If it gets bad enough, simple charging will not do it, and the battery is dead, like really dead. Inside of a car battery, they work as long as they do because there are alternating sheets of lead and lead dioxide. So you have a sheet of lead, sheet of lead dioxide, sheet of lead, sheet of lead dioxide, and throughout the entire battery, there are quite a few of these actually. So the lead dioxide, Sheets are connected by wiring as one big electrode, and the lead sheets are connected as the other big electrode. The electrolyte, again, is a sulfuric acid mixed with some water. It is diluted, and it can be anywhere from 4 to 5.5 molar. 5.5 molar is 30% sulfuric acid. That's what I'll be using in this experiment, but they can go down as low as 4 molar. Now to go over the reactions. Bear with me, because there is a bit here. This side is what happens to the electrolyte when the battery is discharging. And again, discharging is running a light bulb or something. And this side is all charging here. So when you're discharging something, uh, a lead acid battery, you have two H2SO4 sulfuric acids break down into four hydrogens and two sulfate ions. So these are floating around as ions. Of course, the hydrogens are also. So on the anode, when it's being discharged, and again, this is the anode side here. It's made of solid lead. You have lead plus the sulfate ions, which were formed over here, yields lead sulfate. Talked about that up here, how that starts to gather around. That's what this says right here and here, because it happens actually on both electrodes. Lead sulfate plus two electrons. So the sulfate ion actually is the one bringing over the electrons over here. It dumps off its electrons on this lead uh, cat, uh, le electrode here. And those continue up over and come down, which we already talked about. The sulfate then sticks to the lead and forms lead sulfate and will eventually coat both sides. On the cathode side, positive side, we have the lead oxide plus the four hydrogens formed over here, plus sulfate ions are always floating around, plus the two electrons that just came over yields lead sulfate, again, coating the lead uh, dioxide electrode here, plus two waters. So the waters are being formed while the sulfuric acid is being broken down. So if you let this fully discharge, you have lead, this is the reaction right here, lead dioxide plus two sulfuric acids plus lead, that's all that's in here, uh, uh, chemically speaking, yields two lead sulfate ions plus waters. So eventually this will turn into water. It never happens completely because these get coated with lead sulfate on both sides and all of the reactions stop. As the battery is being used, the sulfuric acid becomes weaker. The reverse is true, like I just said. The sulfuric acid is being consumed and water is being created. Now, when you charge the battery, there's a whole different set of reactions that are occurring. So again, we'll start with the electrolyte. So we're charging our battery. We have the two waters, which were formed over here. We talked about that. We'll break down into four hydrogens and two O2 minuses. Those four hydrogens will then work with two sulfate ions to form sulfuric acid. So you're reversing in the electrolyte what you started here. You're regaining your sulfuric acid. The half reactions. When you're charging, 
the anode is positive, the cathode is negative. I reversed them for this only. Over here, they're going to remain the same. The lead sulfate, again, you've got a lot of that because it's all forming everywhere when the battery is being used, plus two electrons, which are coming from charging it, so they're coming from the wall socket or wherever, will yield lead plus the sulfate ion. And again, that's what you want. This is turning back into lead from lead sulfate, and you've let your two electrons go back into the electrolyte here. On the cathode side, you've got your lead sulfate again, because it's coated, plus the water that's been formed. You get your lead dioxide back, plus sulfate ions, which are floating around in here, plus the four hydrogens, which will combine with these again to form your sulfuric acid, plus the two electrons, which again are coming through the charging process. So you can see a lot is happening when the battery is charged and discharged. But to me, it's pretty amazing that this battery was first made in 1859 and we're still using it today. Both lead, lead dioxide and sulfuric acid are very abundant. And so these lead acid batteries have come through for decades, over 100 years now. It's pretty amazing to see how these reactions work and how long this battery has lasted for. In spite of how involved some of these explanations are as far as what chemistry is happening inside of a lead acid battery, the actual experiment is pretty straightforward. First thing I'm going to do is make a lead dioxide electrode, and I can do that easily by taking a lead electrode and then putting in a copper electrode. And you will eventually form the lead into lead dioxide if you let this run in some sulfuric acid for a little bit. Then you'd have to change out the sulfuric acid, put in a lead dioxide electrode that we just made in a regular lead electrode into there, just like we've been talking about with these batteries up here. Once that's done, we'll want to charge this battery or the solution, test the voltages and the amperages, and then run a device. I don't know what I'm going to use exactly, but I'll find something to run off of our lead acid battery like a dead horse I did to this. So let's move on and actually do this. For this project, of course, I'm making my lead electrodes here. I have a chunk of lead that I had poured into that uh, little muffin tin there earlier, some pellets, some leftover other lead parts and pieces. And when this is melted, I'm gonna pour it in this aluminum angle here. Of course, aluminum melts at a higher temperature than the lead, so it'll be fine. And there we go. Heat it up just a tiny bit more to keep it molten. It's not perfect, but uh, I think I'm going to heat that to get it to level off just a little better. I mean, the lead I just poured. And the rest of this will go into my coffee. I'm sorry, my muffin tin there. Okay, that's a wrap for now. Now that I can look at this closely, there's really only one spot that kind of got botched there. Um, there's a little one right there, but for the most part, it's not too bad. So I don't think I'm going to reheat it to get it to level off. What I'm going to do is just wait till it completely cools down and then cut it into lengths. Well, this actually didn't turn out that bad. Um, it came out easy as it usually does, and I'm really happy with it after all. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it, in length, cut it into lengths and make some electrodes. I wanted a 12 inch uh, length of this lead, but I ended up with 13 inches. So I cut two four inch pieces here and one five inch. I'll be using these two for this experiment, and I'll be using this one, um, which will eventually become lead dioxide for a couple different experiments. So put that one aside and go forward with just these two. I'm not sure that this is possible, but I'm going to try and solder some wire leads to these electrodes so I don't have to put clips on them later. So here it goes. Look at that. It took really well. All right, I'm gonna do this with the rest of them. I just put some shrink wrap over where the wires are connected to the lead rods there. And on the other end are these clips. So I don't know, I've never seen this done, but it seems like it's gonna work okay. Here is my 5.5 molar sulfuric acid. It's sold in five gallon bags. 
and uh, this is actually what I use and I, I boil it down to get the uh, pretty darn pure 98% so this is what I'll be using I'm not going to video it pouring out because it's really heavy um, and I don't want to monkey with the video while I'm trying to pour sulfuric acid with this weight so I'll be back I've captured the sulfuric acid in this rather large one liter Nalgene plastic container here and I'm set up here to make the lead dioxide electrode uh, this one of course is copper the other electrode is just sitting there because I want that one to remain pure lead so as soon as we turn on the power source here the oxygen and the hydrogen will split in the water and the O minus will attack it, the uh, lead right there very quickly the hydrogen gas will come off on this side even before any lead sulfate can form this will form lead dioxide all right we're going to pour in our 5.5 molar sulfuric acid here and I want as much of that covered, the uh, lead electrode in there, as I can, without touching the anything on the top, of course. That should be enough right there. Of course, I'll have to toss this sulfuric acid when I'm done because it'll be partially used and can't be used in the actual battery. By keeping the voltage relatively low, we can somewhat selectively start the water breaking apart, apart into hydrogen and oxygen. Of course, the oxygen will bind to that lead electrode, so I'm going to do that. This can be touchy. But yeah, here we go. Right around three volts or so is good. That's good. And you can clearly see the hydrogen being formed uh, on the right there, especially on that copper electrode. I'll get a close up here. You can see the hydrogen on the right and the oxygen on the left there being formed in obviously the form of bubbles. The lead is starting to darken, which is the color of lead dioxide. It's almost black in color. From this angle, you can clearly see the darker lead dioxide on the bottom and the clean pure lead on the top. It's been running for about five minutes and I'll continue to monitor that lead electrode to make sure it's completely coated in lead dioxide. This has been running 20 minutes. I went a little bit extra just to make sure that it had a good coating of sulfur dioxide on that uh, lead electrode there. So I'm going to first turn down the power here. This can take a little bit to go down. Sometimes it does but it doesn't matter as far as taking things out. I'm gonna take this one out first. Copper electrode, that'll speed up the voltage dropping. And next we'll take out what we hope is a really good lead dioxide electrode here. Well, you know what? It's not 100% coated there. Look at that. All right, well, live and learn. I'm gonna go ahead and put it right back in for a bit more. It's been another half hour, so this went uh, about 45 minutes actually in total, but I'm going to call it quits now and turn this down. You can see why we can't reuse the uh, sulfuric acid. It's turned a pretty ugly brownish gray color. Voltage is taking a bit to drop there, so I'm going to go ahead again and take these out. So this is, of course, the copper electrode. And we'll take out our lead dioxide electrode. And look at that. That is so nicely covered with lead dioxide everywhere. Success. Our lead dioxide electrode looks really good. And the next step is to put these both into fresh uh, sulfuric acid and to make our battery. This next step, for whatever reason, I could not get these clipped to the side properly. So I took a plastic top and cut it and jammed it between them. Plastic won't dissolve and it'll hold them apart nicely. The electrodes are set up like you just saw. This is my voltmeter here, and it is, of course, connected right to these two clips here, which go to the electrodes. So this voltmeter measures both volts, which it's set on, and also amps. So I'm going to show you the amps now. This is probably not necessary, but you can see everything's at zero. In order to pour the sulfuric acid in here, uh, because of that plastic top, I'm going to use this smaller funnel and kind of run it towards the edge. Otherwise, I'll probably displace that top. So... I'm going to try to mitigate that problem here and do this in a slower fashion, which seems to be working. We put some energy into the system, so to speak, by making the uh, lead dioxide electrode there. And it's possible to get some energy out of it now. I don't know if any voltage will be created right away, but <clears throat> I'm certainly going to try. Simply by turning this on, we'll find out. And there's about 1.35 volts being created. And it's increasing, of course, as the electrolytes will bounce around in there some more. 
Okay, I have the smaller charger here. It does the same thing as the bigger one. It only measures uh, volts, though, but uh, it's on. I'm going to start turning this up to charge our system here. And again, this is going to disassociate the ions, the hydrogen from the sulfate, and hydrogen from water. I'm going to try to get it up to 12 volts here. And it seems like it's working really well, so I'm just going to keep going. Actually, we'll stop at 9 been about 10 minutes here, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this down and off. So we have our charge battery, and uh, disconnecting this, we'll just leave it as a battery. It's not really doing anything right now. I have a couple things, a motor and an LED. We'll try and run those off of it. First off, I have this little motor with a propeller on it. That's all that is. I'm just connecting it to a wire so I can handle it. It was so tiny. I don't know what's going to happen, to be honest. Hey, we got some movement. Look at that. Nice. And the little LED right here. These are small things, of course. The The amount of lead that's in that battery is really small compared to the amount of electrolyte. You really need a lot more lead to make these, make the battery stronger. But, and of course, look at this LED. Lights up without a problem. All right. Very nice. Okay. Made a lead-acid battery, did a lot of things on the way here.